Good evening everybody, um, thank you for joining. Tonight I'm about to be joined by the lovely fertility blogger, advocate um, and podcast host Alice Rose at This Is Alice Rose. So she'll be joining me any second now. And we're going to be talking about her incredible campaign all around Think What Not To Say. So all of the comments and things that you may have heard or, heard, or others may have heard um, regarding things you should try, things that perhaps, she's here now, so I'm just gonna enjoy, join her now. Hello to those who are joining, nice to see you. Should be connecting any second, so thanks for being patient. Um, good evening. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Excuse the scraped back look that I've got going on here. I was gonna say, I love the earrings. I feel oh. like I should dress up more for our chat. Thank you very much. Well, I don't have much to dress up for at the moment. So. I know. Who does? Who does? Exactly. So I took advantage. But anyway, Amazing. thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on, so thank you. I was just giving a brief introduction to those who are joining. I'm sure lots of them know who you are. But for those who don't, please could you just introduce yourself and then we'll start talking about the amazing campaign that you've been, that you've created. Thank you. Yeah, so my name's Alice Rose and I um, originally started my account to just support people who, who were going through infertility or fertility, trying to build a family in any way after my own experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I was actually just on second, one second, sorry. Just need to plug myself in there. Okay. <laughs> so I'm dying for a minute. Um, yeah, I just originally planned to just share um, the things that helped me find peace um during our experience even though we didn't know what the ending of our story was gonna was gonna be at that point so that was my original reason for starting my account and that's still very much at the core of what I do so I offer mindset courses and um I have my podcast called Fertility Life Raft and it's all about finding that that um uh, that peace within you while you're while you're going through that and finding your all of that other stuff. But when I started my account and I discovered the amazing community and, and it, it just kind of snowballed and the campaign um, was, I'm, I'm launching straight into the campaign here, I've realised, but I'm trying to <laughs> sum up who I am and what I do. Um, but the campaign kind of was born out of that because I realised that so many people were saying the same things and the pain points were all the same. And actually I thought, there needs to be a change in the in the conversation doesn't that there? there needs you know the social narrative needs a massive overhaul because mm -hmm. the more that we invalidate people's experiences by just just devaluing what they're going through and just telling them to just relax or go on holiday and all of the things we hear um it it it, it will affect everything not just how that person feels but their, the people around them and their friends, their family members, but also really importantly, healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're focused. Uh, that's what I'm focusing on the campaign at the moment um, is to try and change that. Amazing, amazing. And there is a resounding similarity, isn't there, between these comments that people have heard within this community that we're hearing again and again. Um, and it's so, this kind of thing is brilliant because if, if people were educated a bit better on what it might feel like to be facing this kind of struggle, yeah. then um, it would help families and friends and loved ones support other people or even strangers or acquaintances. Absolutely. Um, and as as you said, like lots of these comments are really similar or they're spin-offs of another comment. And they, I'm sure these people are not meaning to hurt people, but it's, as you say, think what not to say. It's people either maybe feeling under pressure to say something and then just coming out with the wrong thing because they're panicking. Yeah. Or they're just not understanding um, how big this is for someone struggling with fertility. Yeah, exactly. And therefore invalidating their experience. And it's, it's so often the case that it's, um, it is well intentioned. And, you know, what I really try to do with the campaign while while I'm poking fun a little bit, and I do with my videos and things. Yeah. But I try to make them funny, because I want people to, I want people to laugh at it, because it is, it is ridiculous what people are saying, and it's not helpful. Um, so it's really important that that we do get people to stop and think, um, particularly GPs, receptionists in GP surgeries, um, nurses in fertility clinics, consultants, everyone, everyone needs to learn more about this. Absolutely. It and so much. 
And, um, and, and as you said, it is making healthcare professionals stop and think, hang on a second, the language is so important, isn't it? Because we are talking about her, some healthcare professionals as well, where um, you might feel as though you're a number and you're not a person and you're insignificant or you're just in a checklist of that day. And that can totally change how you're feeling emotionally and the apprehension going into a cycle or during a cycle, can't it? Or even oh, if you're trying to yeah. see naturally. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it's, you know, the messages that I get about this and the, the comments under the post that whenever I talk about the campaign or I talk about, please tell me what your latest comments are. And I do it fairly regularly just to keep mm -hmm. going with, and, and most recently with this new COVID era that we're living in, because I wanted to learn what people were, were saying at this time. And obviously there's so many people making jokes about baby boom, um, COVID baby boomers, which, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of, understandable isn't it because that will be the case for lots for lots of um people. yeah, but yeah. It's just to try and get people to be more mindful about who mm -hmm. their audience is when they're saying this kind of stuff um and you know and, and also we, we so i i work with cats trying mm -hmm. years um with cat and alice and we're working together on a project for the campaign at the moment and um so we've done quite a lot of research on the things that people have said and the what's happening with the clinics and their communication with their patients and um some people are doing it really well um and some people really aren't <laughs> um you know and you know the stories we've heard about people um you know on the, on the phone someone saying um you know that, that this is a national emergency yes your embryo transfer has been cancelled in two days but you know it's not about you you know those are the like wow. verbatim what people have, have, have had to hear and it's i think it's really important i also think the campaign is important to help people who hear those comments because i know i'm sure i don't know about you eloise but when i was going through it i had I had comments from family members, friends, whatever, um, again, well-intentioned, but I, I, I felt like I was overreacting because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'm just being really sensitive or something, or, you know, maybe I shouldn't be that upset about that. Um, so it's really important to, to wave a massive flag and be like, yeah, it's okay to be mm -hmm. upset about it. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's shit. Like you shouldn't, Absolutely. you shouldn't have to hear that. Um, and and what you're going through is really really hard, and I think yeah. I think that's why I'm so passionate about it because you know people are going through enough. They don't need they don't need the, the the comments on top of it all, and especially not from healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, a comment that I remember sticking in my head was um, actually behind my back from a friend, mm -hmm. um, and that was sort of making judging the fact that I had talk, talked openly about male infertility problems. Um, and the comment was something like, uh, if that was my husband, I'd never ever speak about them like that. And it's like, don't judge until you're in the situation. And there are so many people who might make assumptions or might say how they would feel in that situation without needing to be in that situation. Yes. Um, so, I mean, what, what are the things that you've, you've personally heard and what's been coming up in the campaign so far? Um, gosh, so many comments, it's unreal. I mean, you can't, you, it, it just like the floodgates open, don't they? As soon as anyone, it's not, you know, it's not just my campaign, it's whenever anyone posts yeah. about this on, on social media, it just, it just goes, because so many people have to hear it. But I think for me, one of the comments, I was actually just thinking about it just now, um, when I went to a, a Christmas party and someone was, and this was actually after I had had um, a, an IVF baby, so I was a mum at that point, and she said to me, she was, she was asking me about um, whether or not I had children, which first of all is another thing I always try and say, maybe mm -hmm. don't ask people if they've got mm -hmm. kids. Um, yeah. You know, you don't need to, you, you just, just ask know. them about their yeah. lives and it, it will probably come up if they do, so yeah. you don't need to actually ask that. Yes. Um, um, and so I said yes, but I always, always take the opportunity to, to raise awareness. So I and I say, yeah, actually, it, it didn't come easily. You know, we, we had a lot of treatment and everything. And she just questioned everything I said about, you know, the, the length of time that it took and, um, you know, why I went straight into treatment because I pretty much did. And and she was like, oh, well, you know, you could have, what, what you might wait and you might have just might have just happened naturally and just so much presumptuous judgment. And I was like, um, okay, well, there's actually quite a lot more to this than, than you know and we've literally just met and you really don't know me so yeah again you know it's that just 
just stop and just think about what you're saying. Because no, no one's going to leap into fertility treatment if they can possibly help it. Exactly. It's not a choice. Um, yes. And I think because you wrote an article for Fertility Help Hub at the beginning of the year. And I, I remember something like I'll always remember this comment that you mentioned that a friend, a friend of yours or someone, you know, said to you, you were talking about needing fertility treatment and their response was random. Oh yeah, yeah. And that I was. Thought, how would anyone think that that is the right response? For it was that? just a, such a strange response as well. It's like, <laughs> uh, okay, I've just told you something quite big that's happening in my life. <laughs> yeah. It was just really odd. Yeah. So, and I think you know, again, why I'm really passionate about about this is just to try and help. Actually, just to try and mend the relationships that get broken down so much. Yes. And what's What's interesting is that some. Um, uh, so I've been doing this for about a year and a half now. I've been sort of waving my flag about it and um, trying to make noise about it. And occasionally I do get people saying, well, you know, if you're telling people what not to say, it'll stop people saying anything at all and it'll make them worried and, da -da -da, and they'll actually close down conversations. But I have found the absolute opposite to be the case. Mm -hmm. Ever since I started this, so I've had more conversations open up about it than than I ever could have dreamed possible, and it's it's you know it's meant that I've got been able to get it covered in quite big places and have conversations which would not have taken place if we weren't making a noise about it in the first place. So it's just about keeping on keeping on, and and yeah. it actually at the heart of it is um is just just wanting to help everyone, like not just the people going through it, but but to help everyone understand what, what it's like so that, so that everyone has a better experience. Um, and I'm sure, you know, the consultants and the receptionists and the nurses that do say things that upset people would much rather not be upsetting someone. Yeah. So it's just really a matter of trying to help them as well. Amazing. Because you guys did a letter at Christmas, didn't you, as well, to, to friends and family? Because I also feel yeah. like people, especially close family and friends, are really caring and of course they've got your best interests at heart um but they might be treading on eggshells a little bit because they're worried about upsetting you and that actually pushes them into um saying something that might upset you so it's it's a difficult scenario isn't it it is really and, hard and my actually you know my heart really goes out to people who do know, don't know what to say and you know i did an igtv video recently and the very first thing i said was just like if you're watching this you're amazing you know mm -hmm. you're so amazing for trying mm -hmm. to learn and i think anyone who listens to my podcast or gets in touch with me to say i actually follow you because i'm trying to learn how to support someone that's incredible so yeah i it, it's all about empathy on both sides actually and it's not really about saying you're wrong we're going through something really hard um you you need to learn and okay, there's a little bit like that but it's also it's also really just about mending the relationships on both yeah. sides and 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 improving communication on both on both angles really mm -hmm. i think what it also does for people who are experiencing these some of these um insensitive comments is show that there's a common thread and that they're not the only ones having to deal yeah. with insensitive comments. So you're not alone in that feeling of crapness, basically. Exactly. That is about validation again, isn't it? And um, exactly, yeah. And it stops them from feeling like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be responding. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be so sensitive. I shouldn't mm -hmm. be so. Um, and it's yeah, exactly that. Before we talk a bit more about clinics and um, healthcare practitioners, two people, two, people, two people have commented. One said, keep doing what you're doing, it's amazing. And the other one's just said, totally get the family thing because they feel a pressure from, I think, a father saying, you know, when are the grandkids coming? And that, yeah. that is like, I guess, not, not, not an added pressure you, want, you need really, is it? Um, no. That's just a, a parent, you know, thinking saying their thoughts out loud but it's not going to necessarily help the situation yeah it's really difficult and i think with that i mean i for me when we were going through all of our treatment i just tried to maintain communication and mm -hmm. on a on a level that i was comfortable with so i put the you know the ball was in my court always so i would i i came up with you know a way of, of just telling my family what was going on um if i wanted to mm -hmm. but uh, and then actually guiding them a bit and saying what I need right now is this or what I need right now is that. Um, and if they and, and actually they were really amazing most of the time. I, I can't complain. There were a couple of times where, you know, things might have been said or something. But I do think actually guiding your family and friends a little bit 
um, can really help. And I do totally believe as well that we can, ha we can do a lot um, ourselves to work on our own, um, our own peace and our own um, uh, comfort that will help us to deal with those comments. So it's really about that as well. And it's about understanding that, yeah, people will say things that are really upsetting, but there are also ways that you can you can find to deal with that better rather than be just you know you want to punch them in the face which you will naturally want to do <laughs> yeah, absolutely and um i really like what you said about it creating a narrative to try and help men friendships as well because um yeah. or in all relationships because it's really easy isn't it to hold someone to something they've said and to keep replaying it in your mind yeah and that person may have not even realized they've said it um yeah and so you're then stressing or feeling crap for the next week or longer, or, you know, you might think about that comment from five years ago and they may not have realized um, the effect it's had on you. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I'm just so keen on communicating, you know, if there's a really good friend who said something that's upset you, you need to be able to talk about it with them so that you can get through that, you know, or, or if there's been a way that you've, you've, um, maybe they haven't said anything, but it's just felt that they acted or whatever it is you, to, to talk to them. And I, I really think actually a lot of the time, and a lot of people often message me and ask me, Oh God, someone said this. I don't know how to deal with it. What, what, what do you think? I always say, well, first of all, I would write it down in a letter, like how you're feeling, just get it out onto the page, journal about it, get it out. And then maybe send them a letter, probably not the first one you write, because that one was probably going to be a bit vitriolic. Yeah. <laughs> but the yeah. next one, you know, once you've processed it a little bit, um, and that's a really useful way of kind of communicating how you're feeling. And uh -huh. um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just so many levels to this, aren't there? And the campaign can, can be a little bit. Um, it's quite tongue in cheek and it needs to be because it needs to get the attention. But actually, when you come down to it, it's really about um, it's really about heart and soul and love and just trying to, to, to get everyone to just be more empathetic on that on all levels. Um, um, 100 percent. In fact, um, we had an article go out yesterday, which is around relationships. And um, this part of it is around romantic relationships, having done a survey. And the main thing that came up is. Um, showing the struggle, showing it how it can affect relationships. But the, the, the big thing that came out of it was that communication is key. Yeah. And that is basically what you're saying as well with this campaign across every area. It's not just for you and a partner. It's, it touches every point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's, it's just all about, I, I'm obsessed with communication. I, I, yeah. uh, my sister, um, I always used to say to her, communication is key. Even growing <laughs> up, the communication is key. And it just is. Like, once you yeah. get that nailed, you know, everything else would just, you know, be fine. Definitely. Definitely. Just know it's like, I think it's also like, um, you can misinterpret things that are said on social media or a text oh, yeah, yes. or, or an email. And actually, if you picked up the phone or had a, did it voice to vo face to face, the way that someone's saying something might be totally different to how you've read it. Oh, God, yeah. Definitely. I do that all the time. Yeah, we all do. It's a natural human thing because you're in your own headspace. You're doing your own thing. You're in your own zone and you've got your own stresses and your own difficult things. And then and so you're, you're going you're gonna to interpret things coming at you from your own unique perspective. Yeah. And that's really important to remember as well. When you, when you hear a comment, actually, sometimes it might not be as bad as you think it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I am the champion of trying to stop people saying things. But actually, it's true that sometimes they are not going to be as bad as you think they are. So it's really about that as well. Definitely. Reading, reading the situation. Yes. Um, so how, uh, talking a bit about um, healthcare practitioners and, and the campaign that you and Kat are working on, um, how have people been responding to that? Are they open to a change? Do they feel like this is something that needs to be addressed? Do they see it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing that we're doing is working. Um, I, don't, I actually don't know how much I'm allowed to say, to be honest, but we're, it's it's just um, hopefully going to be an opportunity for us to talk about this with a large number of, of healthcare professionals who work within the fertility arena, which is amazing because, you know, the more that we can get this out there, I think particularly with the healthcare professionals thing it can be really difficult when you're sitting in a room you know with a, with a co consultant I think it's called white coat syndrome or something mm -hmm. you just don't feel like you're they're equal actually and and I've found this and I'm, I'm quite a confident person and I, I often you know can speak my mind and everything but I absolutely was just floored at my first fertility consultation um 
she was quite a difficult personality and there was like she said some things and I found it really difficult to actually just you know speak speak up and 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 be the person that I am normally outside of that room which is why I'm so um passionate about doing this on behalf of people who are in the midst of their treatment mm -hmm. or who are in the midst of trying to get their referral or whatever it is they are not in the state of mind where they are able to um be as strong as you can be when you're not in the middle of yes. it yes that's a really good point because you're just you know you you know what it's like you're, you're yeah. you know you're, you're not the real you're not your own person at the, no the you're consumed with what's happening and you, you know you're dealing with all manner of like mental health things probably or or even if you're not you know one way or another what you're going through is going to be affecting your life quite significantly to the point where you really don't want to be having to you know have an argument with your consultant about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not necessary and actually going back to that white coat syndrome thing, I think another thing is um, for men, but, but especially for women, this part, you're lying there with your legs spread open. So yeah. you feel pretty vulnerable. Totally. Um, That's a really good point as well. Yeah. It's not something, because I've had friends, you know, say, oh, that was really embarrassing. I went for a smear test and I say, you've had IVF. That's that's nothing. Like yeah. you're so used to spreading your legs. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, um, which God. sounds awful, but it's something that you have to deal with. And so yes. you know, no, it's, really, that it's such a it's instrument. such an important point, isn't it? Because you're so vulnerable, as you say. You're you know, mind, body, soul is just open, and you you just have to just let people do what they need to do to you. Um, mm -hmm. And so you, at the very least, you deserve the respect. Mm -hmm. that what you're going through is bloody difficult and you should you should be treated really carefully and really really well um and you should not have to hear comments i mean i i think particularly it's difficult because friends and family members i understand um i really do get it like that, that often comments said well intentioned they just don't understand yes. um but with healthcare professionals, they should understand. You know, mm -hmm. they should get this. They work mm -hmm. in this arena. They should understand. And they shouldn't be saying the things that they're saying. It's, it's not cool. Now, lo, 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 must say that there obviously are plenty of people who work within the fertility industry who are amazing. Yes, loads of course. doctors and nurses and, and people who are just incredible. And there are lots of them actually who um, support the campaign, which is, which is great. And... Um, you know, and, and thank God for them because they will also hopefully be helping spread the word as well. Brilliant. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. Have we missed any comments? I'm just, I'm not sure whether anyone has asked. I, had, I, I did see someone saying my mum refers to the fact that I'm going through IVF as my condition. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, and, with me, if that was my mum, I think I would say, do you know what? I don't find that really helpful when you say that. Can we, can we not refer to it as that? You know, just, just say, just tell her. Because she probably just doesn't know that that's an upsetting thing to say. Or maybe she thinks that that's an easier word to hear than IVF or what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard, isn't it, though, to advise? Because obviously we oh, don't, gosh, don't yeah. know you. We don't yeah, need yeah, your yeah. mum. Totally. But, totally. You know. Um, and then someone else has said knowing how to begin telling parents what it's, what's going on is really hard. Yes. Again, I guess it's just what you feel comfortable telling. Yeah. Um, and in your own time, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's completely um, unique to everyone's circumstances. It's, it's, you know, your own family relationships are so complex. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really about whether or not you, you want to tell them. Um, I always totally advise telling people closest to you what's happening. And the support. Yes, I, I think that that's a really helpful thing to do. But obviously, you have to do what's right for you. Um, and if you're able to tell people what's happening, then 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 you guide them in how to support you as well. And that's, you know, that's a way that you can can manage it. But it is it's really, really difficult to bring it up in the first place. And I think I it's just it's a bit cringy, isn't it? Because it's all a bit like sexual and weird. Yeah, and I, I felt like that, that. Telling, telling my dad that is kind of like, you know we'd, we'd never normally talk about women type things as he'd say um <laughs> so to start having to say that and then talk through the treatment plan it's just a bit weird oh it's so um, weird but do you know what's even more weird is that it becomes not weird that it does become really weird. weird i yeah. remember sitting down with my yeah. dad um you know and him t t talking to me about my ovulation um cycles <laughs> i was just like this is so odd but it but it became not odd actually yeah, um, yeah, yeah. because we exactly. talked about it quite openly in the, in the end so 
Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone's just said, we got told to keep trying by nearly everyone, we t mm -hmm. nearly everyone we tell. And that's even after we told them that my husband has zero sperm count. So no amount of trying will help. I'm so sorry. I was in exactly the same position. We use donor sperm. And um, after we had our first daughter through donor sperm, everyone said to us, just, re you know, just keep trying naturally because you never know, it could happen naturally. And just yeah. feel like shaking them and saying, you don't know the full story because we've got no. working the same components. So actually that, that you know, that yeah. may not be the case. So yeah. I'm sorry that you're having to hear that. Yeah, and I just, I, yeah, I, I'm so sorry having to hear that as well. And I think that there is a real problem with this never give up mentality. I really, I've chatted about it before. I think it's quite a damaging philosophy to kind of mm -hmm. push. And I, I know that can be a bit controversial within the community because for some people that is actually a really helpful narrative and I, I, I get that. Um, but I personally, I like to think of it as never give up on yourself, not never give mm -hmm. up on that path that you're you're on because you you don't know what's going to happen and actually there's no shame in walking away from it if that ends up being the thing that you you need or want to do either for whatever reason so it's it's much better to think of it as your own personal what what yeah. do i not want to give up on um rather than, rather than that someone's just agreed with us about the weirdness dad thing and then not becoming weird because it becomes so normal <laughs> Um, being told keep yeah. trying when having for loads and cheese removed. Yeah. We can have fun practicing. We can have fun practicing. That is just horrendous, isn't it? Being told oh, that, just, you know, you should again, be making it just, loads of time. Uh, yeah it just it, it just invalidates it again sorry i'm just going to sort my lighting it out does. I've got it does some it does <laughs> um, um i think that um yeah i mean we could probably carry on going through these all night couldn't we and i'm conscious um that it's probably getting on in the evening so thank you so much alice um maybe when you know something else happens with the campaign we could do another one of these i'd love to tell things. people about what's going on with the campaign um and if you don't follow alice already do and the same with the podcast because it's the most incredible campaign and lots you. of you know great stuff to come thank you so much for having me i've really loved it and, loved um, it yeah, too loved thank you again. have a good evening everyone thank you bye bye, bye.